All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Dolan from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to welcome back uh, Ruben Gonzalez. How are you doing, Ruben? Hey, great. How are you, John? Excellent. And Ruben, in case you haven't seen the other interview that I did with him, Ruben is a a four-time Olympian, correct? That's four-time right. yeah. winter Olympian in that crazy sport of luge, the one where you basically take a tray from your kitchen and you sit on it and you go down at like 500 million miles an hour down a looping uh, <laughs> course. You've seen it. It's it's, it's exciting. And um, and so Ruben is also, uh, I'm correct, you're in training right now to be hopefully the oldest winter Olympian ever, right, in the, in the next it. Olympics. That's that's the uh, that's the goal, Beijing 2022. And if I make it at 59, I'll be the oldest ever. So uh, uh, that'll that'll be good. Maybe we can get Jared all to be my sponsor. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So um, Ruben also is a keynote speaker and a motivational speaker and a writer. And what we wanted to talk about today is because you know this is uh, this has been recorded now at the beginning of December. We're heading up towards the end of the year, obviously. And as you head into the new year, we always, you know, we make New Year's resolutions or we reassess our lives. I mean, there's a lot of thing that go, things that go on. And I wanted to talk to Ruben about, OK, so all of us, and I'd say probably 100 percent of us go into the new year and say, this is the year I'm going to I'm going to do better. I'm going to strive for more. I'm going to achieve more. And then the 3rd of January comes around and I'm just back into the old routine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to talk to um, Ruben about, you know, how do you set goals properly? And then how do you motivate yourself to make sure that you achieve those so you do better next year than you did this year? Sure. Well, you know, I always tie my productivity in my business and I'm a professional speaker. Right. Mm. And but I'm not really a speaker. Um, my, my, my mindset is I'm in the marketing Ruben to get more speaking engagements. Right. That's I'm a salesman, just like everybody listening to this. And so the way to get myself going and the way that I've always done it is I tie something personal, something exciting to my to my productivity. Right. So I'll set a goal and I can't, you know, I'll get the prize. And so Beijing, man, that's keeping me that's going to keep me going big time for the next four years. Right. Because in order to go practice and train, it takes a lot of money and it takes a lot of speaking engagement. So I have to. And so you put pictures of your goal everywhere. I mean, I've done that. Everybody that's listening to this, you guys used to do this when when you were a teenager. You had pictures. If you were like me, you had pictures of girls and cars all over your room, right? I don't know what kind of pictures the women had, but, you know, but anyways, so you're keeping the dream in front of you. And then as you grow up, you start peeling those off the wall. It's like you're taking the dreams off and, and you go from living to just existing. And you have to go back to living, you know. Uh, people that are in sales probably have more umph than most people because, you know, we're out, out there, you know, we're, we're – we're battling, right? Mm-hmm. And so if you constantly tie it to something that's I – mean, I, I don't check my emails before I have to write down my goal. My goal right. – and I just write Beijing 2022. That's enough to get me fired up. I don't have to write it. I know it. But you know what? Writing it down is an act of commitment that gets it into your subconscious mind. And, man, if we walked around my office in my house, we got pictures of Olympic mobilia everywhere just to keep it in front of you. If I daydream, I daydream Olympics, and I tie it – to the business yes. so that's one thing I do. yeah i think that that's a great piece of advice and I, and I absolutely recommend everybody because i know it seems like i know you've heard this a, a million times before write your goals down and keep them in front of you but how many people do that lots of people don't i have mine right in front of me here i have i have five things that i want to achieve in the next six to 12 months and they're in front of me every day and i can look at them and every day i look at them i have to ask myself what am i doing to achieve them right yeah. Yeah. And you know what? Who you associate with is huge, right? If you want to lose five pounds, start hanging around skinny people. <laughs> if you want to gain five pounds, you know, start hanging around the other people, right? <laughs> but if you want to increase your sales, how about you take that salesman of the month, take him out to Starbucks once in a week or so? Man, successful people, they like to talk about success. They'll tell you everything. And if you actually do what they said, right, that they did, You'll be salesman or sales lady of the month next month. And, and it just works that way. You become like the people you associate with. So I, I make it a point to hang around people that are already doing what I want to do. So those are two. Let's let's just make sure so we get everybody to, to collect these ideas as they go. Is Number one is identify what your goals are. 
write them down and then put them in front of you and look at them every day and ask yourself, am I doing am I doing everything I can to reach those goals? And the second one, as Ruben just said, is surround yourself with the people who are role models for what you want to achieve. So if you find yourself surrounded by you know, maybe you didn't have a great year and you want to whine about it and you're finding yourself surrounded by people also didn't have a great year. Well, there's a clue, right? Switch those people <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, no, and if people are whining, you know, if, if all the whiners and complainers are out by the water machine, man, just stay away from you. Associate with winners and disassociate from the other people, right? Because you become like the people you, you I, I guarantee you, you average the five people you're spending most time time with. You average what they make a year, and that's what you're making too. You want to double your income? You should start hanging around some millionaires and look out. It'll start happening because they think big, and they will encourage you because they 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 know the way. They just do. So those are basic. If I'm a manager of a sales team, I always tell when I'm speaking at a, at a uh, sales kickoff, I I tell them, look, find out what your people's goals are, personal goals. If Mary wants to take her family on a cruise next year, and if Bob wants to buy a, uh, a Mustang, and if Jane wants to get braces for her boy, right? Well, don't ask them, how, how are you doing on your sales? Ask them, hey, how are we doing on that trip for your family? And go buy and bring them some brochures and take Bob over to uh, test drive a Mustang. Man, they will love you for that because, and they'll run through walls for you because you really care about what's important to them. And they will start tying their performance to their personal goal and look out, everybody wins. Yeah, and it's a, and that's a really good point as well is so, you know, don't just put up your quota, your target on the wall. I mean, you should because you should have be conscious of where you are to that. But associated with what are the things that you're if you hit this target, what are the things that you are personally going to be able to do in your life? So here's another question, um, Ruben. OK, so. Say it's around, I don't know, it's you're, you're a quarter into the year, right? And you're there with your luge and you're heading up to the top. And, you know, and maybe maybe you're not where you want to be at this point of the year. Maybe you thought you'd be a little further on or whatever. And you feel yourself getting into a motivation dip. How do you get out of that? You know, my worst, I, I'm a positive guy. I mean, about once a month I'll get, you know, I'll get down a little bit. But it's, you know, I usually... Uh, nip it in the bud and it's the next day I'm, I'm fine but in 1987 we were in St. Moritz Switzerland for a world cup race and and I was doing okay that year the Italians were great and so we were training in the morning they're training in the afternoon so that afternoon I went to curve 13 that's where I was having a little problem but just tiny stuff and man when you're sitting in front of a track and 3 feet from you somebody zipping by 89 miles an hour it's it's unreal right it's like and for 2 hours i'm watching those italians i'm trying to figure out their lines <laughs> zoom man i can't believe i do that zoom. wow i can't believe i do that i did that for 2 hours the next day when I'm on that sled and I'm barreling down the track and I hit curve 13, my mind reminded me, that's right, Ruben, you can't do that. And I forgot to steer. I hit the top of the track. I came down. Last thing I remember, I'm looking through my legs. I'm flying through the air, which is really bad luge position, by the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the sled's <laughs> just smashing into pieces. I'm sliding down the track, just me, 80 miles an hour. And here comes that sled. If it hits me, I'm a dead man. And so I just jumped out of the track. I figure whatever's on the outside, it's softer than <laughs> that sled. And I hit something i broke my hand i broke my foot total sled and this is like a year for the olympics and i got into a pity party for three days which is my world record <laughs> halfway over the halfway over the atlantic flying back home i finally got my head straight i thought hey i've broken bones before you know 40 days from now it'll be it'll be stronger than before bones heal right but tomorrow i'm going to the gym i just got to get back on that horse even if i can't do anything at least i'll be there and maybe i can't afford another sled Maybe somebody can lend me a sled. So I started making a list. I'm on the plane. I'm making a list of anybody that could possibly lend me a loose sled. And one of the guys, from, one of the Kiwis, one of the uh, New Zealanders, uh, Adam Cook, he lent me his sled. He's a lot shorter than me, okay? <laughs> but, but you know what? I slid on that sled, and I qualified for the Olympics, and I raced on that sled. And uh, even though it was a little bitty sled for me, it looked like a kitty sled. It was better than sliding on my rear end, right? So <laughs> do what you can with what you have right now. And don't look at the bad side of things just try to find a, a positive somewhere because if you just focus on that negative you're toast successful people think about where they want to go unsuccessful people think about what they don't want to happen mm -hmm. so don't focus on the negative focus on the goal become like a guided missile and and look out you'll get those coordinates and and, and you're bound to hit 
Yeah, and taken. I mean, that, and that's a great uh, example that you use because I presume then that taught you a great lesson is not to second guess yourself when you're coming to a part of the course, right? Or allow these doubts to come into your mind. So you know, through all the pain, there was a lesson there, right? Oh yeah, and, and I learned about about self talk. Two hours of bad self talk, right? I can't believe I do that. That program that was enough to program my brain to mess me up, right? The Man, the words that come out of your mouth are powerful. So mm -hmm. you have to be really, really careful. There's whole books about self-talk. Mm -hmm. I, I wrote a thing called The Champion's Creed. It's just my affirmation that I read before every run and before every, every race run. And it's like putting on mental armor. It's like, I am a champion. I'm a winner. I love the competition. I'm going to do it. I'm a champion. It just goes, you go to thechampionscreed.com. You can print one up and put it on, on your desk. I mean, it's good stuff. And you say it like you're mad, right? Like I'm talking <laughs> to you right now, right? That's called passion, okay? It's kind of like mad. That's called passion. Most people don't know how to do passion, right? So it takes a South American to teach you all how to do that. <laughs> but yeah, you get in front of that mirror. First thing in the morning, last thing at night, eyeball to eyeball, man, I am a champion. I can do it. I'm a winner. I'm going to get that thing. Man, you get strong. You mm -hmm. start believing. You start, you know, the, the, the champion inside you pops out and, and look out. Yeah, and, and I think that's another great point is, I mean, to some people, you know, they'll go, oh, yeah, you know, that sounds a bit hokey standing in front of the mirror. But it really does work, right? Because there are so many examples, I mean, you're one, but there are so many examples of successful people, not just athletes, but people across all walks of of life who will tell you about the self-talk and about confronting yourself in the mirror and talking to yourself. Because, you know, there's a statistic uh, from uh, psychology today, like that 78% of people's self-talk is negative on a daily basis. So just think right. about that. There's 78% of the time, there's no, 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 something going on here. You got to reverse that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why the association is so important. Because if you hang around, look, <laughs> When, when, when I, even before my first Olympics, I'm in this little gym in Houston and in walks Evander Holyfield and a <laughs> bunch of other boxers. And he just won the championship, right? And everybody did the same thing. Oh my gosh, that's Evander Holyfield, right? And nobody had the guts to say, say hello to him. But the littlest one of all, he's about five foot tall. I thought, he doesn't look so bad. I'll talk to him. So the little guy gets on a stationary bike, starts warming up. And I got next to him and I started warming up. And I knew it was a boxer, but I want to start a conversation. So I said, well, what do you do? He says, I box. What do you do? I said, I'm a loser. And he goes, don't you ever call yourself a loser. Man. You're a winner. He said it like that. Everybody got off their machines. They wanted to see who this loser was. I almost went and joined a different team, right? A different, a different club. Well, it turns out this little guy was Vinny Pazienza. He's, if you ever seen the, money, the, the movie uh, Bleed For It, he, yeah. a couple of months after I met him, he broke his neck in a, in a, a mm -hmm. car accident. They said that he wouldn't walk. He had one of those halos. And... Long story short, he, he came back and he, and he won the championship again. Mm -hmm. And so the guy was tough as nails. And he told, told me, look, you got to watch out what comes out of your mouth because it'll, you know, <laughs> you can get hung by the tongue, he said. <laughs> and then he took me over to Evander Holyfield and he says, you know, what do you think about self? So I goes, yeah, man. And he told me to wear a rubber band. He says, mm -hmm. wear a rubber band, one of those big thick ones. Every time you catch yourself, you know, uh, uh, bad mouthing yourself, calling yourself stupid or whatever, you pop yourself as hard as you can. And then you you uh, you have to say the the positive, right? I'm a winner, right? So I you know I say something like, "Man, you idiot!" Oh, pow! I'm not, a win. I'm not an idiot. I'm a winner. A month later, I stopped. I nipped it in the bud, right? I, I would always about to call myself a loser. I I, I said, "No, I'm a winner," right? And so that works. It's hokey. It's dumb, hey. but it works because that's how our minds work. So, so that, uh, man, it's good enough for Evander is good enough for me. Absolutely. So another great another great piece of advice there is if you find yourself succumbing to that is do something like that. Get yourself the, the rubber band, the elastic band, whatever, and do that. Because if you can if think about it, if you can reduce the negative self-talk by default, you're going to raise the positive self-talk. And it's going to make an impact on your life. And um, actually, another interesting thing about just about Evander Holyfield, you know, that they say, you know, people would some say, oh, I don't have the tools or I don't have the gym or I don't have this. There's one fight he prepared for when he built all his muscles by their exercises you can do, you know, by opening and closing your hands and turning them oh, with your yeah. with your arms out straight. That is equivalent to lifting weights. And he did that to prepare for uh, to prepare for wow. a, a, a championship fight. So, you know, you can't if you sit there and say, well, I can't build muscle because I don't have weights. Well, guess what? You don't need them. 
<laughs> that's right. That's right. You can grab anything, a chair. Did you yeah, hear you that little rumble with... sound? Yeah. John, did that did that come across, that little no. rumble sound? No? Oh, okay. Well, whenever I get a text, and, and see, I, I'm serious, man. Look, that, that's the back of my phone. Oh, all right? yeah. I got I love it. things everywhere. But I just got a text. Whenever a text comes, it's the sound of a luge going by the, the track. Right. Excellent. Whenever somebody calls me on the phone, it's the same exact bell that you hear at the start of the World Cup race. I mean, I am always thinking about this stuff. I mean, I'm not just telling you guys a, a bunch of stuff that I don't do. This is what I do. You know, mm. and I was the, the last kid picked for P.E. all my life. I'm a slow poke. I'm not a great athlete. Okay? I got a lot of heart, but no body. All right. Mm. But by doing this stuff, I was able to go to the Olympics four times. Yeah. So mean- this stuff for me or for anybody. Yeah, I, I love that about your phone there. I mean, uh, I could start doing that myself, actually. But um, so there's a great idea. I mean, so if you're in sales and your goal is, I don't know, if you want to own a Ferrari, right? Get the noise of the Ferrari. Get the fo- Ferrari on your phone. Get the yeah. noise of the Ferrari. How, how cool would that be? You put a little picture. Look, this is not a special case that they give to Olympians, okay? Mm-hmm. Look, look, let me show you this. I'm taking it apart here. Look, it's a piece of paper that I... <laughs> I print it up and I cut and I stuck it in here. See, you can do this too. You can. <laughs> you don't have to be a millionaire to be successful. You do all this stuff and then you become a millionaire. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I love it. So um, last last piece of advice, Ruben, again, um, if so, maybe so we've said, OK, we have the motivation dip. So say you get over that, say you get to mid year and things are going pretty well. Right. How do you ensure that you don't go to the other side and get into complacency and then think, well, yeah, I don't have to do all of these things now because things are rocking pretty good. I can settle back a little bit. I know that is such a trap. I mean, I've, I've, I do that myself too. You know, you have a great month and then, and you know what, whenever I have a bad month, I can trace it to three months ago. I wouldn't make enough calls. I can always do that. Whenever my jeans start feeling a little bit tight, I can always trace it, man. I was eating that chocolate cake. I should have eaten that. I should have stuck with the broccoli. So, uh, you just, I think we're human, okay? I mean, you're going to mess up. Everybody messes up. But if you do these things daily, right, keep the goals in front of you, put pictures of it, put the sound of that Ferrari in your in, in your phone, right? Talk to people about it. Become known for your goal. If you become known for your goal, right? Oh, man, you want to get that sailboat, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, didn't you take sailing lessons? Yeah. Where? In Colorado. What? <laughs> don't have any, there's no water in Colorado. That was me. I lived in Houston all my life. I never took sailing lessons. I moved to Colorado. I went and did it in a reservoir, right? Yeah. But if you get known by, the, by, your, by, by your dream, that means you're telling people about it. And, and, and that'll keep you fueled up. And, and, and that'll keep you, you know, going even on those slow months more yeah. than usual. I mean, you, no one's going to be perfect. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I do think that's the one thing to watch out for is complacency because the minute things start going a little bit well, there's a, ten, you know, you have a tendency to go, well, I don't have to do all the things I was doing anymore. I can eliminate some of them. And then as you know, you get back into, then things start backsliding, right? So you've got to yeah. convince yourself when things aren't going well to continue them and when things are going well to continue them. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, guys, uh, everybody I talk to complains that, oh man, nobody answers the phone anymore, right? Mm-hmm. And that's true, right? Compared to 10 years ago, you know, the phone's not as effective but it's still very effective, okay? And so call them up. And when you leave, oh, but nobody returns my, my voicemails. Well, it's because your voicemail is boring. That's why, and it's too long. Try to keep it under 20 seconds. Really, try to keep it under 20 seconds. And, and, and be excited. Your, 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 your energy's got to come across because uh, if you sound boring, man, and you're trying to sell them, and they, they know you're trying to sell, sell something, and you sound boring, I mean, how? You know, sales is a transference of emotion. You're not transferring anything there, okay? They're not going to answer. <laughs> so make it short, leave, and then follow up with an email, right? And then repeat, repeat ad nauseum, all right? Mm-hmm. But you got to do it. Your competition's not doing it. You might as well do it. And, and it works. It really will. Sooner, sooner or later, you'll catch them. And, and, and timing is everything. Yeah. You call time, timing will come one day. Exactly. That's what I would say. I mean, it's great if uh, if everybody says that, calling doesn't work and well then let's face it then nobody's making any calls so therefore if you do call you're going to surprise somebody might actually get through yeah send them a card you know nobody sends cards anymore look i got them right here let me show you look 
These are these little cards. See, it's the size of an envelope. Mm-hmm. See, got a picture of me on the luge. It's got a couple of my books on there. It's got some, you know, my website and stuff. And, but I don't say, hey, please buy my stuff. I say, hey, make it an Olympic day or, <laughs> or hope, you're having a great, hope you had a great Thanksgiving, right? Or, or something. But keeps you type of, top of mind. You send them one of these every two or three months, at least you're top of mind. Nobody else is sending anything. So mm-hmm. that'll set you apart. Excellent. Listen, Ruben, as always, this has been a fantastic discussion and um, some great, I mean, there's about five or six takeaways here for everybody to have the best year you can possibly have in 2019. And in fact, don't even wait, start doing it now. If uh, if this video goes out before the end of 2018, start now, set it up for next year. Um, and let's have a great year. And uh, thanks again, Ruben. And again, Ruben, if people want to find out more about you. Well, my website is thelugeman.com. The ice man was taken, okay? <laughs> so I had to do the luge man, T-H-E-L-U-G-E-M-A-N.com. And uh, hey, make it an Olympic day. Thanks for having me. Yeah, great. Thank you, Ruben.